Getting started. We are live. Hey there, how's it going? Lee Hayward here with the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Inner Well, Total Fitness Bodybuilding Live video chat for Friday, June twenty second. I was going to say this is for the Inner Circle, but no, this is a live public video chat. Uh, the way these chats work is I'm going to be hanging out here for the next hour and answering any questions that you would like to discuss with regards to bodybuilding and fitness, uh, training, nutrition, any specific challenges you're dealing with when it comes to building muscle, losing fat, uh, any issues that you're struggling with. Hey, feel free to post those questions, comments, uh, topics of discussion in our chat window, and I'll do my best to help you out in any way that I can. So what I want you to do first is if you can hear me, if you can see me, if this is coming through loud and clear, please let me know in the chat window just to make sure that everything's good and you can hear me coming through loud and clear before I actually get into answering your questions. So go ahead, do that now. Let me know if you can hear me and see me and post your questions and I'll get into them very shortly. I just have to organize a couple things here from my end and I'm doing something a little different today. Uh, I mentioned this earlier uh, for the people on Facebook. I'm actually doing two live streams simultaneously. So I have my uh, smartphone going here for a Facebook live chat and I've got my webcam going for a YouTube live stream. So both of them going simultaneously and I'll basically uh, probably jump back and forth between the two of them. But I decided, hey, why not, you know, basically kill two birds, with one stone and get the benefit of two live streams going simultaneously because I know I have certain people who only follow me on YouTube, certain people only follow me on Facebook. I mean, a lot of you I know follow on both, but I decided it'd be pretty cool to have both going simultaneously uh, to benefit both platforms. So uh, just give me a second here now. I get things organized from my end. There we go. Okay. All right, shoot. Okay, here we go. Got some questions coming through here. And the, this is ah, double clicking things here. My mouse is a bit touchy. Okay, here we go. So this is coming through on the YouTube side of things. I have Woody Lowe's joining us. Uh, Orang is joining us. Uh, we have Zachary. Uh, Woodney Lowe's can hear you. Zachary, it comes through clear. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Make sure it's come through loud and clear. And I'm just going to check here on Facebook as well. And we have Gary joining us. Bring them on. Okay. Uh, Gary saying it's loud and clear. We have Matthews joining us. Patrick's joining us. Okay. Excellent. All right. Gary's got a question here. And he says, when building muscle, how important are, uh, are curbs to build muscle? How much is needed and when? All right, this is a good question, and I find that for a muscle-building diet, you should have a decent source of carbohydrates. Uh, I found that a low-carb diet works the best for fat loss for most people. Uh, but if you want to primarily focus on gaining muscle, gaining strength, improving your athletic performance, uh, you don't want to be on a low-carb diet. Uh, what I would recommend, if, if you're just trying to get things figured out and just starting out, you can go on... Uh, probably like a one-third split. All right? I'm, I'm looking at two cameras here, so if it looks like I'm bouncing back and forth, because uh, I literally am. Uh, have a one-third split. So one-third of your calories are going to come from protein, one-third of your calories from carbohydrates, and one-third of your calories from fat. I find that that is a good, well-balanced ratio for most people to start with. And if your goal is muscle building, then you want to make sure that you're in a slight caloric surplus. So you can kind of use one of these like online calorie calculators. I actually have a, an article up on my website. If you go and like do a search for like Lee Hayward calorie calculator, you'll find it. But th there's a lot of uh, ways to estimate your general caloric intake. Follow that as, as just an educated guess and then make sure that you're in a slight surplus. I mean, for most people, it's probably going to be you know 18 calories per pound of body weight or more is a good benchmark to shoot for. And have yourself in a slight caloric surplus with that one third ratio of all the three macronutrients and follow that for a few weeks and see how your body responds. And then you can adjust it accordingly. I mean, if you find that uh, you're not gaining weight, you can always bump up the calories. If you find that you're gaining too much excess body fat, then you can kind of scale things back down or maybe bump up the cardio, but it just gives you a starting point. And what you'll find is Having adequate carbs in your diet is going to allow you to feel stronger, uh, make better gains. It's going to help to keep you in a more anabolic state. 
and it just makes the whole muscle building process a lot easier. Uh, when you want to really focus on the majority of your carbohydrates, uh, have a good serving of carbs in a pre-workout meal. So like at least uh, an hour or two before you go to the gym would be an ideal time to have a pre-workout meal with a decent serving of carbs to give you some energy for that workout. And then uh, for your post-workout meal, you'd want to have another good size meal with high proportion of carbs. So try and window your carbs pre and post-workout, especially when your goal is building muscle. And then throughout the rest of your meals, I mean, you can kind of have that equal split like I mentioned before. So hopefully that helps, Gary, and uh, thanks for your question. All right, I'm going to jump back over to uh, the YouTube chat and take a question from here. Let's see what we got. Uh, Mainu is asking for a six-day workout home dumbbell plan. I've got all my dumbbell workouts posted in a playlist on YouTube. So if just go to my main Total Fitness Bodybuilding YouTube channel, open up the playlist link, and you'll see a playlist there called Dumbbell Workouts. And it basically has workouts for all your major muscle groups using dumbbells. So if, if you're looking for a home workout that you can follow, uh, that would be a good place to start. Uh, we have Safa joining us saying, Lee, can you say hi to Safa? Yes, I can. Hi, Safa. <laughs> uh, we have Safa, Rohail, uh, Henya, and Ishel. If I'm pronouncing these incorrectly, I do apologize. Uh, it says we have, I believe it's Ishel's first birthday tomorrow. Well, congratulations. I know what it's like to have a, a young baby. I've got a 21 month old. So uh, it's uh, quite a challenge for sure. But at the same time, it's a blessing. And I wouldn't change it for the world. So again, congratulations on that. Uh, he says his question is how to lose belly fat. I go to the gym four times a week. That's a very generic question. How to lose fat, how to build muscle. I mean... If if you really don't know, uh, what I would recommend you do is download a copy of my ebook. It's called The Three Keys to Building Muscle. And this covers training, nutrition, and mindset that goes into a proper bodybuilding program. And it covers both building muscle and losing fat. I mean, I, I try to... With these video chats, I'm going to try and focus on more specific questions. I mean, a very vague general question like how to lose fat. I mean exercise, eat right, boom, there, that's how you lose fat. Uh, I'd rather get into more specific questions. So what I'm gonna do for these basic generic general guideline questions is I'm just gonna refer you to that. If you haven't already done so, go download the three keys to building muscle because again, that covers the training that you're gonna need to follow. It covers nutrition in detail and it also covers the mindset that goes into following a proper bodybuilding program. Another one that you're gonna find helpful as well and you can go and download is my bodybuilding nutrition made simple ebook this is a complete guide to following a structured bodybuilding nutrition program and it even covers some strategies for following a bodybuilding diet geared towards fat loss so both of these programs are available on my website leehayward.com uh, i've got a, a few others there as well but i mean hey go ahead download all those ebooks i mean it's it's a wealth of information right there just yours for the taking all you have to do is go and download it it's totally free, and it'll certainly put you on the right track towards building a leaner, more muscular physique. So again, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, happy first birthday to your little one, and again, enjoy those eBooks. They'll definitely keep you on the right track. Uh, Dennis is joining us, and everything's loud and clear. We have a Granny Spinner. You gotta love that username. Saying, do you have any recommended off-season powerlifting programs for intermediates? And what's your favorite rap album this month if you listen? All right. Well, I can answer the second one pretty quickly. I don't have a favorite rap album. Not that I'm against rap or anything. It's just, you know what? I'm, I'm not really much of a music person. When I'm listening to audio, it's usually like listening to uh, audiobooks. I usually listen to like podcasts and kind of something that's going to be more informative rather than just music that's that's just my personality i like to listen and use that time uh, for basically educating myself again audiobooks podcasts are my favorite uh, i also have a few other things that i uh, listen to but again it's usually educational based not so much music based so i don't have a favorite album uh, as far as powerlifting programs there is a lot of stuff that you can look into uh, one program that I followed with great results, uh, especially when I was training for powerlifting back in the mid-2000s, 
was the West Side Barbell Method. Now, I mean, there's a lot of, West Side Barbell is, is kind of like encompasses a lot, but if you go to their website, um, they have a basic nine week program uh, and West Side Barbell nine week uh, basic template. And this is what I followed uh, for a lot of my powerlifting training and I found it worked really well. And it was set up in such a way that you would be cycling your training uh, using different assistant and special exercises to help bring up the core power lifts, you know, your squat, bench, and deadlift. So the way the workouts were designed is you'd have the dynamic effort, basically speed training one day, and then you'd have max effort training the next, and you would go through alternating the dynamic and max effort lifts, uh, followed up by special assistant exercises. And I found that very effective for bringing up my strength, but I also found it good for gaining muscular body weight as well. Because, I mean, as you're getting stronger, you're also indirectly getting bigger. You know, stronger and bigger go hand in hand. So that's one that I would recommend. I followed it myself with really good results. Um, I'm sure if you go search for it, you'll be able to find it because it, it was around on a lot of sites. It was on, like, West Side Barbell's webpage. It was on uh, Elite FTS's webpage. But that was one that I found very uh, helpful. There's a lot of others, like, uh, for example, like Bill Starr's 5x5 program is another really good one that you might benefit from. Um, are, uh, another one that I really liked, not not truly a powerlifting program, but I found it was very effective, was the 20 rep squat program. Again, an old school one. Very simple, very basic, very brutal, <laughs> but it worked. Uh, I actually made some of my best gains with just that simple program done three days a week. Uh, you know, what you'll find when it comes to a lot of power programs is they don't have to be complicated. More often than not, the more basic, simple programs actually work better. It's just that simplicity followed consistently and done in a progressive overload fashion, it just adds up to big gains. So it's the consistency over the long term that's what's going to really make, make or break a program for you. But those are some of my personal favorites. And uh, like I say, give those a try and let me know how they go for you if you do decide to use either one of those. All right, let's go back. I'm going to bounce back and forth between YouTube and Facebook. Okay, Edmund is joining us, and he says, what got you into bodybuilding? Interesting question. Thanks for uh, posting that, Edmund. Me, personally, uh, several things got me involved with bodybuilding. This is this is kind of a big question, but it's, it's a good one because everyone has their own individual story, their own individual motivation. Uh, one of my biggest inspirations, I guess, for bodybuilding specifically was seeing Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Conan the Barbarian movies. This was the first time I seen a bodybuilder. And he wasn't playing a bodybuilder, obviously he was playing a barbarian, but it was the first time I seen a man with muscles back in the Conan the Barbarian movies. Uh, at the time, I think I was around maybe 11 years old. I know that's kind of young to be watching a barbaric movie, but I, I seen it actually, uh, it was coming on television. So I didn't see the actual original release of the movie, which came out, you know, in the early eighties or something like that. But I seen a replay on television and I watched it and I was fascinated with it. And I actually recorded it on, uh, on my V on VHS, you know, back in the day, everybody had, uh, you know, VCRs playing VHS tapes and you could record onto those tapes shows that came on television. So I actually recorded Conan the Barbarian on my uh, VHS tapes, and I watched it over and over again just because I was so inspired by Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I wanted to build a body like that. So that's how I got started. And my dad had an old set of York uh, weights, you know, the barbell dumbbell set, that old plastic cement set. And I started lifting that back in the, oh, gee, it was, it was around 1990 or thereabouts. I started with that. Yeah, that year for Christmas, I wanted a home gym set, so my dad uh, went out and bought us a York 2001 home gym machine, and that's what I got started with, just a basic York barbell and dumbbell set and that York uh, 2001 home gym machine. Uh, 2001 was the model, not the year. This was way back before this. This is around 1990 when I started lifting. And um, both myself and, and my dad, we worked out together down in the basement as workout partners and followed the, those old cheesy York workout charts that came along with the equipment, you know, doing like total body workouts, you know, ev maybe every other day. And that's how I got started. Uh, as far as other motivations, um, 
I was also involved with martial arts from a young age. And one of my primary reasons for that is because like a lot of kids, I got bullied in school and I wanted to be bigger and stronger than the bully so that nobody would pick on me. So that, that was another big motivation for me early on. So that's how I got involved with both martial arts as well as bodybuilding. And I pursued both of those uh, throughout you know, school, through junior high and high school. And then uh, in my later years in high school, I kind of took a, a, a fancy towards bodybuilding. So that was my main priority. And I actually did my very first bodybuilding competition in uh, uh, 1995 in my senior year of high school. I was 17 years old at the time. And that's when I did my very first bodybuilding competition. And I was kind of hooked from then on. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of a, an intro to how I got involved with bodybuilding. So again, thanks for posting that, Edmund. All right, let's move on back here to the YouTube chat. Uh, let's see what else. We've got Carter is joining us. He says, good evening, Lee. I want to talk to you about nutrition oatmeal. I eat it every day. Is that a good thing? Thanks. Uh, oatmeal is a very good bodybuilding food as far as, you know, a good source of carbohydrates and fiber. Uh, I'm a big fan of oatmeal. It's one of my favorite sources of complex carbohydrates. Uh, you know, what I would recommend, uh, you know, that would be a good uh, meal to have, like say it could be a pre-workout meal to give you some energy before you go to the gym. It could be a great post-workout meal to help refuel afterwards. Um, you know, I mean, you, you can basically have it whenever you want. I mean, just factor it into your diet, into your, make it fit your macronutrient profile that you need for your specific diet and body type. But yeah, oatmeal is uh, definitely a good food that you can consume on a regular basis. Um, I mean, when I was getting ready for uh, bodybuilding competitions, a lot of times my breakfast would start with oatmeal every single morning. What I would like to do is like uh, in, in contest prep mode, I'd get out there and I'd do cardio first thing in the morning. And then my first meal of the day would be a high protein oatmeal recipe. And actually, I have a couple of videos on YouTube showing this. If you just search for like Lee Hayward high protein oatmeal, you can see some different variations that I like to make. And this was uh, and still is a, a favorite breakfast meal of mine. So yeah, oatmeal is a, definitely a good staple to include in your diet. I mean, it's good quality and it's cheap, right? I mean, that, that helps, right? You know, especially if you're trying to bodybuild on a budget, you know, it's one of those foods that's not going to break the bank, but it's going to give you some good quality nutrition. Okay, let's see. We have a Woodyulos joining us, and he says, Lee, how can I gain an inch on my arms? All right, inch on the arms. Every guy would like to gain bigger arms. I don't know anybody who wouldn't. The first thing they need to focus on, if you want to get bigger arms, you need to get bigger and stronger all over. And the general rule of thumb for every 10 to 15 pounds of muscular body weight you gain, you're going to put an inch on your upper arms. So if you want to gain an inch, look on gaining between 10 and 15 pounds of muscular body weight. Uh, if you're looking for some actual training specifics to help you with this, uh, I put together a program. It's called Blast Your Biceps. And this is an arm specialization training program. And what it is, is it basically takes you through a three-phase training system, which is going to help to prioritize your arms. It's called Blast Your Biceps, but it's, it's much more than just a bicep program. I kind of use that name because I like the alliteration of it, Blast Your Biceps. Uh, but it's actually a total body training system. So you're going to work all your major muscle groups, but we're going to place priority and emphasis on the arms. So phase one is kind of like a general prep, prep phase to get your body uh, ready. Phase two is the arm specialization phase where you're really going to prioritize the arms and make some good gains. And then phase three is like an overall strength and power phase where you're going to solidify the gains that you made in the second phase of the program. So uh, if, if you're looking for a great arm specialization training program that's going to help you get bigger and stronger all over but prioritize the arms, then I'd recommend you check out Blast Your Biceps. And you can just type in blastyourbiceps.com and head on over there to download a copy of that program. That would be the, the one that I would definitely recommend the most. All right, let's see what we got over here on Facebook. And, oh shoot. We have uh, Hisham joining us and he says, what's the minimum times per week? 
What's the minimum touch per week? I go to keep my muscles in good shape, which I have long hours, work these days, and all summer. I'm assuming what's the minimum times to go to the gym per week uh, to keep yourself in good shape. You're saying you're working long hours this summer. I would recommend, ideally, three times a week would be a good uh, you know, a good workout schedule to follow. The minimum, you could get away with two workouts a week and still make decent progress. Uh, but I think uh, if, if you really want to kind of move yourself forward, uh, three times a week is what you should strive for. And I've actually made some of my best gains doing a three day per week or every other day type of training program. And the thing I like about this is you go in there, you train, and then you're giving your body a full day of rest in between each workout. So you have that full day of rest for recovery and growth. And I find for a mass building, this works really well because you can go in there, hit it hard, hit, go heavy, give yourself a full day of rest to recover, and then go in there and hit it hard again. And I find that if you try and speed that up, like say training you know, two days on, three days on, or, or, or even more, multiple days per week in a, in a row like that, it kind of breaks your body down faster than it allows you to build up. But if you do this alternating day on, day off, or three days a week on non-consecutive days, uh, that's a good schedule to allow for optimal growth and recovery. So that's what I would recommend. And again, as far as different work, workout routines you can follow, it really depends on your individual preference and what stage you are. Uh, if, if you're new, I'd recommend starting off with, say, like a total body workout done three days a week. If you're a bit more advanced, you could probably do, say, like a push-pull program. Or, or maybe, actually, let me rephrase that. It, I'd start off total body three days a week if you're brand new. Uh, the next phase from that would probably be like an upper-lower split. And then if you want to progress from there, probably like a push-pull legs. That's the way I would usually recommend uh, the progression for most people. But regardless of what program you follow, the main thing is just to be consistent. Consistency over the long term, regardless of what training split you follow, that's the key that's going to make all the difference. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, we got Gary saying thanks for the response. Uh, we have Bobby, Bobby Wiggins joining us, and he says, any advice for a 42-year-old who's going back to the gym after an eight-year layoff? Yep, I do. When you're coming back to the gym after a long layoff, you need to start back just like a beginner. So it doesn't matter how many years you've been training beforehand. When you're coming back, you need to start off brand new. Uh, so I would recommend, say, like a three-day per week total body workout, you know, just to get yourself back in the groove. And, and for the first month back to the gym, don't even get too hung up on you know, the weights you're lifting, don't get hung up on, hey, you know, back in the day, I used to be able to lift X amount of weight. None of that matters. Just go through the motions. Just get yourself in the habit of showing up to the gym, going through the motions with a, a basic beginner's total body workout. And that is your goal. The goal is to show up and just go through the motions. If you do that three days a week for the first month, then Chances are you'll, you'll notice uh, some improvement. I mean, after that first month, you should feel better. You should be, uh, you know, more comfortable in the gym. And you, you'll all, you'll start to, you know, get back into the groove of things. But then you can worry about training in more of a progressive overload fashion. I mean, when you're starting off, like things like progressive overload and any type of high intensity training techniques, like don't even think about it. Don't even worry about that. Just go through the motions. Just get into the habit of going to the gym and being consistent on a regular basis. That's what you need the most when you're coming back to the gym or when you're just getting started is the consistency and developing the habit. Once you have that in place, then you can worry about all, you know, making things harder and more challenging and stepping up the intensity and all that. That's that's the easy part. The hard part is just showing up. Right. So if you get that mastered. We can always make it more challenging. That's not difficult to do. I mean, yes, it's difficult in terms of, of the work that's involved, but the habit is what's difficult to develop. So that's what you need to focus on. So if, if you want an actual program to follow, uh, I'd recommend my um, total body workout for beginners. Just head on over to uh, the Total Fitness Bodybuilding YouTube channel. And right there on the main channel page, uh, if you scroll down, you'll see a beginner's playlist. There's one there, a total body beginner's workout. You can follow that workout, you know, to the letter. I mean, you could, you, if you want, you could open up that video on your phone and follow it along when you're at the gym and follow that workout and do it on a, three days per week. 
And like I said, that'd be a great place to start to get you back in shape. Okay, let's move back over here. Uh, let's see what else we got to YouTube. And uh, Orang joining us. And he says, uh, welcome, Lee. Thanks. Uh, my question is, uh, the 20 rep squats, what method, how many how many times repeat for a week? How many sets is effective for mass? All right. Just do a search on Google for Lee Hayward 20 rep squats. Uh, I've got a blog post. I've got a video. And now, it's, it's older stuff, but the, the program's the same. I mean, the 20 rep squat program is nothing new. This thing's been around for, man, oh, man, like 100 years, right? It, it's definitely not no new cutting-edge program. It's, it's cutting edge in terms of results, but it's old as dirt as terms, in terms of, you know, basic programming. Uh, just do a search for it. Uh, I'll give you a quick overview of it right here. The basis of the program is you're going to just take one set of squats and do 20 reps. So just do a bunch of uh, warm-up sets uh, with low reps to get yourself uh, used to the movement. And then take your working weight, grind out 20 reps. After that, you're going to do a set of high rep pullovers, usually shoot for around 20 reps of pullovers. And then uh, after that, I recommend some sort of upper body circuit routine. I mean, it could be like uh, dips and pull-ups and maybe some abdominal work. Uh, it could be anything. I mean, but usually it's just some sort of upper body circuit routine. Uh, so squats, pullovers, upper body. Squats, pullovers, upper body. And just go through that. That's all you'd focus on. Do it three days per week. And with the squats, it's just one set of 20 reps. And then each time you do it, you try and add five pounds to the barbell and get an, at least 20 reps per set. You know, that's the goal. So I, I recommend starting off conservative and letting the weights build up gradually. If, if you read some literature about it, some people say you should take, you know, uh, a weight that you can normally do 10 reps with and then just through sheer grit and determination, grind out 20 reps. That sounds good in theory, but I would recommend that you take a sub-maximal weight. Take something, like for your first workout, you should be able to complete all 20 reps without killing yourself. I mean, it should be challenging just the sheer fact that you're doing 20 reps. 20 reps of squats is hard, but you don't want it to be you know, to the point where you're just totally exhausted and gasping for air and, and you know beat to a pulp after that one set. Because I like to start conservative and give yourself room to improve with the program. And just the fact that you're being consistent and trying to increase the weight by five pounds every workout, that's going to add up very quickly. I mean, we're talking like 15 pounds over the course of a week, week after week after week. And most people, you're going to get maybe six weeks of progress. Some people can stretch it out a little bit longer, but usually... Uh, the program is going to run its course within about six weeks. And at that point, you're going to probably be hitting a plateau in terms of uh, how much weight you can add to your 20 rep squat. Once that happens, once you hit a plateau with it, then it's time to, you know, uh, put that program on the back burner and follow something else. And I would probably recommend at that point a more traditional, well-rounded bodybuilding split routine to kind of focus on all your major muscle groups, not just, you know, prioritizing the squat as we are with the 20 rep squat program. But again, if you want the exact program written out for you, you know, exercise by exercise, just do a search, go on Google and search for Lee Hayward 20 rep squat, or you can even go on YouTube and search for it. Cause again, I have an old video there, uh, demonstrating the entire workout for you. Okay. We got rub 504 joining us saying I do a five by five program, which is every other day of training and rest two days. Uh, but I want to do some type of high intensity interval training cardio on rest days. Will that conflict with the rest time and therefore ruin the program? Uh, that's kind of hard for me to predict. It depends on you, your individual work capacity, conditioning, and, and a whole bunch of stuff. I would recommend doing some sort of cardiovascular exercise on your off days. Whether or not it's high intensity or low intensity, I, I would go by your individual energy levels. And I'll use myself as an example. When I'm doing cardio, I will play it by ear as to how hard to push it. So some days, if I'm feeling very energetic and I, I want to try something more challenging, then I will do a higher intensity cardio workout. So I might go for a run. I might uh, you know, do some type of interval training. On days that I'm feeling a bit tired, a bit beat down, 
then I'll just do something low intensity. Maybe as simple as just going outside for a walk or, or just some low intensity cardio on the cardio machines at the gym. So I, I really am kind of instinctive with my cardio. And even on some, sometimes on the days that I'm feeling like a bit beat down and tired, I might start off doing low intensity cardio, but then maybe like 10, 20 minutes into it, I'm, it, my energy starts to pick up and then I might throw in some intervals there that are a bit more high intensity because I just feel like doing it. But basically I, I would recommend just playing it by ear. And if you feel energetic, then try for a high intensity cardio session. If you're not, then just scale it back and do a low intensity cardio session. But the most important thing is that you're consistent with it, uh, you know, consistent on a regular basis. So uh, a good way to do it is if you're, let's say you're doing weight training uh, three days a week, then on your rest days, get out there and do some sort of cardiovascular, be it low intensity or high intensity. And that will just improve your overall work capacity. It'll improve your health and fitness. It'll help you to burn body fat and just make you feel better. I mean, getting outside and doing cardio is, is a great form of, of like active meditation. It just helps to clear your head and, and de-stress your body. And, and that alone has huge benefits. You know, a lot of times we are so bogged down with stress at work, stress in family situations or, or whatever it is that you got going on in your life. And it's nice to sometimes just get outside, breathe the fresh air and do some sort of cardio, even if it's just getting outside for a walk as a kind of a mental and physical detox for yourself. So just that benefit alone is, is definitely worth the investment uh, of your time to get outside and do some cardio. All right, let's jump back here. We have uh, on the Facebook chat, Tom Poole is joining us. And he says, what are some of your favorite podcasts? Um, some that I like. Uh, Jay, Jason Frugia, uh has a really cool one that I like. I listen to his uh, Renegade Radio podcast. Uh, another thing that I like to listen to a lot is um, Brian Johnson. He has a, a program called Philosopher Notes. And what it is, it's a lot of personal development uh, books that are condensed down into a 20-minute uh, audio file. So he, he'll take a full book. Like, it could be anything. You know, just give you an example. It could be like... Um, how to win friends and influence people it could be, you know, there's this big, thick, meaty book and he'll condense down the key points of that book into say like a 20 minute audio and as well as a six page PDF. So he takes books, gets the key points of those books, gets them into the audio file as well as the PDF. So it's a great way to get a lot of valuable information and nuggets in a short period of time. So I actually signed up for a membership on his website. It's called Philosopher Notes, and I like listening to these. And I, I have, you know, literally uh, hundreds of them on my MP3 player, and I listen to them. So that's another thing that I like to listen to a lot of. Uh, other types of training programs or things that I've downloaded, uh, those are some that I like to listen to. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. I mean, it could, uh, sometimes it's personal development or it could be business-related type of things. Uh, sometimes it's it's uh, things dealing with uh, communication or business, and then of course sometimes it's fitness related stuff. But uh, I have a, a wide variety of, of interests that I like to listen to. But those are a couple of my uh, my favorites. All right, we have another question here. Uh, Danner is joining us. He says, "What are your tips about returning to the gym after a while?" That's kind of the same as a question we just had earlier. Uh, Bobby Wiggins asked that one. Um, so I'm not going to repeat that. If if you were if you're just joining us and you didn't get that, you can catch it on the replay. Uh, Jamie Stewart's joining us. Uh, says Lee, is it true that lifting heavy and lifting lighter with higher reps is the same? No. <laughs> you can still make progress, uh, but it's not the same. Heavy lower rep training is going to uh, stimulate a different metabolic response in your body than uh, lighter higher rep training. Generally, when you're lifting heavier and lower reps, you're stimulating more of the fast twitch muscle fibers. And uh, when you're doing the lighter, higher volume, you're stimulating more of the slower twitch fibers. One is more geared towards muscular endurance and time under tension. One's geared more towards strength and power. Uh, the best way to go about it is to combine some form of both. And th there's multiple ways of doing this. You can have phases in your training where you're going to say, okay, this is a, a high rep phase. I'm going to do lighter weights and higher reps and do all your exercises like that. 
And then you can have phases where you say, okay, this is going to be a heavy low rep phase, and you do all your exercises with heavy low reps. That's that's one way of going about it. Uh, one Another way that I'm more of a fan of is to adjust your reps and weights according to the exercise. So big, heavy compound moves, bench presses, overhead presses, squats, deadlifts, rows, things, you know, big compound lifts. I generally like to train those with heavier weights and lower repetitions, generally. Now, of course, there are some exceptions, like we were talking earlier about a 20 rep squat program. I mean, obviously that's that's high repetition. Definitely not considered light training, but it, it's higher repetition training. Uh, but overall, I like to do the big compound lifts for heavier weights and lower reps, and then the smaller isolation exercises for lighter weights and higher reps. Uh, I actually have a blog post. If you go to my blog and just search for how many reps should you do to build muscle? I think that's the, the title of it. If, if, if not, it, it's close enough. If you go to Google and search like Lee Hayward, how many reps to do to build muscle or, or something along those lines, it should pop up. I can't remember the exact title off the top of my head here. Uh, but I break down all the different exercises and give you some general guidelines in terms of the rep ranges. So the really big compound lifts, you know, you're going to do low reps. Say like, you know, would be ideal for say like a five rep workout. Uh, some of the mid-range exercises, which are technically compound lifts, but not as as heavy as like a squat and deadlift or a bench press. Uh, you could probably do those for somewhere in the 10 repetition range. And then the smaller isolation work, you know, things like side lateral raises, abdominals, calves, you know, the, the really small isolation exercises. You can do them for somewhere in, say, like the 15 repetition range. But that's a, a general guideline of how I like to usually split up my set and rep patterns, or, or, or sorry, I should say rep patterns for the different exercises. All right, let's just adjust that there. Okay, back over to the other video chat and see what other questions we got coming through here. Uh, we have Zacharia joining us. Do you, do I have to work abs to get them clear? If you want, if if you sorry. <laughs> Do I have to work abs to get them clear if you know what I mean? I'm assuming you mean if you want to get defined abdominals, do you have to work them? It certainly helps. <laughs> I mean, technically, no. I mean, I've seen guys who have lean, visible six-pack abs and who don't train their abs directly. I mean, the way the abdominals are, they are stabilizer muscles for your torso. So even if you don't do any direct abdominal training, but you're doing other exercises, training your other body parts, indirectly your abs are still getting some stimulation. Now, it's not necessarily optimal, but they are indirectly getting stimulated. Uh, what's most important in order to get abdominal definition is leanness, losing excess body fat, getting the skin around your midsection very thin so that you can actually see the muscle definition in detail. That's the most important thing. Uh, training the abs is definitely going to help. I mean, if you if you have thicker, more well-developed abdominal muscles, then they're going to be more visible and more prominent when you get your body fat low enough to actually see them and reveal the muscle definition. But uh, the, the most important thing is losing the actual body fat. Training the abdominals, it, it's not... Not as important as some people make it out to be. Like you see a lot of people think, well, oh, gee, I want to lose my gut, so I'm going to work my abs every day or, or something like that. And that's you know, you can't spot reduce the fat away. You know, doing daily abdominal training isn't going to ma magically make your midsection smaller. It's just going to develop the muscles. In order to lose that body fat, you need to focus on diet and cardio in order to strip away that excess body fat. And then, uh, you know, the workouts and the weight training is just going to help to develop the muscle underneath. Okay, and that, that kind of ties into a next question I have here. This one is from uh, Safa saying, I just don't understand how athletes have a flat belly. What do I do? Uh, 100 sit-ups a day, uh, fast all day. I need one-on-one -on -one coaching. Can you help? Um, well, one-on-one <laughs> -on -one coaching would be the easiest answer there because we could really focus on all these variables, all the things that I've been talking about. And if you are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, then you can either just shoot me an email or just head on over to my website at leehayward.com. And right up there in the top menu bar, there's a link for coaching. And I do offer different types of coaching services, uh, depending on how in-depth you want to go and what your individual situation is. You know, we can have a customized one-on-one -on -one coaching program specifically for you. Uh, but again, it goes back into the, the previous question that I just answered. 
in order to lose that body fat or sorry, in order to reveal your abdominals, you have to lose the body fat. And if you look at most top level athletes, they're very lean. I mean, it's hard for an athlete to perform at their best if they're carrying around excess body fat. So most of them are fairly lean. I know there are some exceptions, but more often than not, athletes are, are lean and that's why they have such flat, well-defined stomachs. So uh, again, 100 sit-ups a day is not the answer. You can't spot reduce the body fat away on your midsection. You have to do it through a total, uh, a total uh, program of weight training, cardiovascular training, and nutrition and, and lifestyle, of course, all combined into a full program. And again, if you would like help with that, then I would be more than willing to help you through uh, my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. Uh, we have Marcelle joining us saying, Lee, what is the best way to progressively overload the muscle? Is it for more reps, more weight, adding more time under tension, less rest between sets, etc.?" All of the above, all of that would be considered progressive overload. Now, generally, when people think of progressive overload, they're looking at the weight on the on the barbell, you know, increasing the weight that you're lifting. That's the way most people focus on progressive overload. And uh, that's generally where I would recommend. You have a set program in place, the exercises, sets, reps, and you just focus on getting stronger on a weekly basis. Uh, trying to you know, add an extra five pounds to the barbell, especially for your big compound lifts. That's a good basis for progressive overload. And it works really well for people who are in that beginner to intermediate phase. As you get more advanced, it becomes harder to consistently get progressive overload with your training. Uh, you know, you're going to have times where you're going through plateaus and your body's just not responding the same as it was. And that's where we can focus on different aspects of progressive overload. So maybe instead of adding weight, we can focus on getting an extra repetition per set or maybe just doing an extra set. You know, you can do it that way. And then, of course, there's other variables like the, measuring the time that you rest between sets and gradually work on reducing the time, the, the rest time between sets. Now, there's a time and a place for all these different types of uh, variables and intensity techniques. For example, if someone's training to lose body fat, and let's just say, for example, a competitive bodybuilder who's going through a pre-contest phase and they're getting close to their competition. If they want to step up the intensity, I would probably focus more on either increasing the repetitions, increasing the sets, or decreasing rest time rather than increasing weight. And the reason for that is because it's a safer way to train. If you have a, a you know pre-contest bodybuilder who is in a depleted state trying to lose excess body fat, increasing weight may not be the best option because there is a risk of injury there. Uh, when you're dieting, your strength isn't going to be the same. So you're not going to have that same limit strength for lifting heavy weight. So you can focus on other high intensity techniques such as uh, more repetitions, more sets, or less rest time between sets. Uh, someone who's, you know, off season eating high calories and trying to get bigger and stronger, I would focus more on uh, the weight aspect and trying to get progressive overload through simply increasing the weight on the exercises. But it, it is an individual thing. You know, it's not like one is right or wrong. It's it's just different methods and you can use these methods depending on the individual and the situation that they're in. Okay. All right, another question here. This one again from Marcelli saying, I've been lifting for five years, two of which I've been eating mainly bro foods. I get a kick at it, bro foods. Like, anyway, I'll continue on the question. Uh, wanted to add lean mass with very minimal fat. Is adding three to five pounds of muscle a year good or too slow? That really depends on you. I mean, and you know, some people, if, if they can gain five pounds of muscle a year, that's like really good progress. Uh, for others, you know, especially someone who's probably newer to lifting, it's probably very slow progress. And it also depends on your age. You know, the younger you are, the faster you're going to gain. The older you are, the slower you're going to gain. So again, there's, there's not a one size fits all answer here. But to put things in perspective, if you could gain five pounds of muscle a year, I mean, that's actually really good progress. And then just say you did that consistently for 10 years. I mean, that's 50 pounds of muscular body weight. That would totally transform your physique. 
So again, it's, it's small progress added up consistently over time. That's what really makes the biggest difference. Uh, you know, the, these little short-term transformations, I'm not saying that you can't push yourself and try to make some short-term progress because you certainly can, but what's going to have the biggest impact in your physique is that long-term progress, that long-term consistency. Uh, that's what, you know, you really want to focus on. But um, yeah, so I mean, it, again, I'm not, I'm not going to say it's it's good, bad, or right or wrong. It, it really depends on the individual. So what's the most important is focusing on improving yourself. So again, just focus on that. If you can make progress with your own physique, then that's the key. All right, uh, another question here. This one, uh, up north of 60, saying any tips on how to rehab shoulder impingement? I would probably recommend uh, checking out uh, if, if you had some serious shoulder impingement, I would recommend the investment of going to a good physiotherapist and get them to physically check you out and make sure uh, to, to kind of diagnose and see what exercises and movements you can and cannot do. I mean, having that one-on-one -on -one, uh, session with someone who's experienced and used to working with athletes can be invaluable. I mean, back when I've had my injuries in the past, like I've torn biceps, I've torn my uh, lat area and, and things like that, I always went to see a physiotherapist, and I'm glad that I did. I mean, even with years of training knowledge and all that under my belt, it's still nice to have that, uh, you know, third-person opinion of your physique and, and of what you can and can't do. And chances are uh, you're going to come away with it you know, with some good advice, especially if you go in there with an open mind. I know some people like to say, oh, physiotherapists, waste time, waste the money, don't go there. You know, if, if you go in with that attitude, then, you know, it probably will be a waste of mind because you're not going to be open-minded to learn what they have to say. But uh, I've always found that whenever I visited a physiotherapist, especially, you know, if you request one who's used to working with athletes, used to working with, uh, you know, bodybuilders and powerlifters and stuff like that, uh, more often than not, you're going to come away with some valuable insights and exercises that can help. Uh, if, if you want some uh, tips that you can try and do on your own, uh, I do have a video. Uh, it, it's geared towards rotator cuff injuries, but it, it's, it kind of covers the entire shoulder. Uh, but if you do search for Lee Hayward rotator cuff, that's a, a good video. And it goes into uh, shoulder injuries in a lot more detail. It covers like why we get shoulder injuries to begin with, and it covers a lot of different exercises that you can use to help uh, balance out your shoulders and, of course, to rehab injuries. But that would be a good one to check out. Uh, but first step, I would probably go visit that physiotherapist. And uh, it's probably only going to take a couple sessions, but those couple sessions could be well worth it in terms of getting a good, clear vision of what you can, can and cannot do for your individual situation. Okie dokie. Let's see what else we got here. Um, Juan Duploy says, is there any point of training arms if you don't have the genetics for it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, not everybody has the genetics of a pro bodybuilder, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't go and train. I mean, there's, there's, Right? I mean, I don't have the genetics of a pro bodybuilder, but I still go in there and train, if, if nothing else, for the health and fitness aspect of it, right? I mean, so the whole idea of genetics, and, and there's a unique thing about genetics, because unless you go and actually train and, and push yourself, you don't know what your body is capable of. Uh, if you look at a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of bodybuilders, when they started out, they probably never looked like bodybuilders or you couldn't tell their true genetic potential when they started out, uh, meaning before they started lifting, that is. In some cases, you could, right? In some cases, guys are, are lean and muscular before they ever touch a weight. But most people, their body just responds really well to weight training, people who are genetically gifted. Uh, and again, you'll never know that unless you go in there and actually push yourself and train consistently to see how your body responds. But again, even if you don't have the genetics for, you know, uh, to be a pro bodybuilder or anything like that, then I still think just for the, the overall health, fitness, and, you know, the, 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 phys the physical benefits of it is definitely worth it regardless of, uh, you know, genetics. Uh, we have Eric joining us. And Eric is a sponsor of the Total Fitness Bodybuilding YouTube channel. Thanks, Eric. I do appreciate it. 
he says, Lee, I'm almost 50, and uh, while I'm not in the worst shape of my life, I would like to start working out seriously. Is there any exercises I should focus on to, to begin at my age? Yes, late bloomer. All right, uh, you're just getting into bodybuilding at age 50. You know what? I have to commend you for that uh, because a lot of people, when they get to whatever age, I mean, it could be 40, 50, 60, whatever, they just say, you know what? I'm too old. I'm not even going to bother. But you're actually taking action, and I have a lot of respect for that because guess what? I mean, you've got the whole rest of your life ahead of you. I mean, who knows how old you're going to be? I mean, you might live to be 100, so you may have 50 years of weight training ahead of you. And if you do, man, uh, more power to you. And if you actually take action now, <laughs> there, there's a good chance you're going to live longer and hopefully, you know, live live a long, healthy life. Uh, getting back to your question, though, as far as what would I recommend you start with, a basic total body workout routine. Keep it simple and just focus on being consistent. So uh, I mentioned this earlier in one of the questions we had. Uh, I have a beginner workout program posted up on the main Total Fitness Bodybuilding YouTube channel. Uh, just go there in the playlist section. It's a total body workout for beginners. That's what I'd recommend you start with and just focus on going through the motions. Mm -hmm. Showing up to the gym on a consistent basis, going through that workout. Don't get too hung up on the weights that you're lifting or anything like that. Just make it a habit to show up and go through the motions. Uh, with the workouts, how I'd recommend you, you structure the sets and the reps and all that. Start off with a very conservative weight, something very light, and just go through the motions with the exercise. Say, like, do 10 repetitions. Get comfortable with the exercise. If the first set feels good, increase the weight for the next set. You know, if that feels good, increase the weight for the next set. And just take it little bit by little bit and just kind of work your way in there and get comfortable over time. And what you'll find is... Even though it seems slow initially, week after week, you're going to get more comfortable. You're going to get, uh, you know, your technique with the exercises is going to start to improve. And you're going to see progress relatively quickly. Even at 50 years old, you're going to see progress relatively quickly. Like I can guarantee if you go in, you know, day one and then you know, a month later, you're going to be significantly stronger on all your exercises a month later just from being consistent and showing up on a regular basis. So... Go through the motions and kind of just have that beginner's mind. Don't expect too much too soon. Just enjoy the process, and you'll actually be surprised at how fast uh, things can change, especially when your body is totally you know, new to working out. It just Everything just happens, and it kind of just responds well. But the key, especially at your age, uh, and I'm not saying that you're old or anything, but I'm just saying you know, a 50-year-old is not the same as a 20-year-old, so you got to be a bit more respectful uh, just pay attention to your body, and if anything hurts or causes any sharp discomfort or just doesn't feel right, then that's probably not the best exercise for you. And if that's the case, then you know, send me a message, and I'll offer some substitution exercises that you can do instead. Because your body is going to give you warning signs. If if something doesn't feel right, your or, or is not right for your body, your body is going to give you a warning. It's going to give you some sort of pain or discomfort. Now, there's a difference between the pain of actually pushing through an exercise, you know, that that pump and that lactic acid burn. I mean, that's good pain. But then there's this sharp, shooting, discomforting pain. And that is the sign of a potential injury waiting to happen. And if you get these sharp, discomforting pains, not this just this dull ache of fatigue, uh, the sharp shooting pains are bad pain. And so if you get that, then let me know and I'll offer some suggestions on how you can... Uh, uh, modify the workout in order to work around it because the main thing is just working the muscle. I mean, you don't have to get hung up on the exercises themselves. I mean, if a certain movement causes pain or discomfort, you don't have to do that move. You know, you can do another exercise, another movement, another variation and work the muscle with something that's more comfortable and more suitable for you and your body type. So again, I wish you all the best and please uh, keep me posted with your progress, Eric. I, I love to follow along and offer any uh, insights to help you maximize your results along the way. All right, let's go back to Facebook. I know we still have a few people joining us live on Facebook. Obviously, there's a lot more joining us on YouTube than there are on Facebook, but that's to be expected. YouTube is a uh, tends to have a bigger following. Uh, okay, oops. Uh, John is joining us, and he says, "What is a quick way to cut weight? I'm very lean as it is, but I would like to tighten up further in the coming weeks." 
Uh, I've got a program, John, that I think would be very beneficial for you, and it's called Extreme Fat Loss. And this is actually a cutting program that I've used for myself getting ready for bodybuilding competitions. Uh, it's one that I've used in later years because I found that as I've evolved, uh, as my body has changed over the years, my methods for cutting body fat have changed as well. Like when I was younger, I could get away with uh, eating more high carb meals. Um, and as I've gotten older, I found that I've actually responded better to keeping the carbs and then the, the starches down lower. So the extreme fat loss is uh, a low carb uh, cycle diet. And how it works is uh, you're going to focus primarily on lean protein, green veggies, and healthy fats for the majority of your meals. And then we're going to have a few strategic high carb refeed days in there to help um, bump up your metabolism, optimize fat loss, and also help to aid with uh, lean muscle growth as well. So if you want to check that out, um, you can get it on my website. In fact, if you go to um, what I would recommend first is go download uh, Bodybuilding Nutrition Made Simple. This is a good guide and it's available right on my website at leehayward.com. This will cover the fundamentals of nutrition that will apply regardless if you're bulking, cutting. It's kind of like your Nutrition 101, if you will. So I'd recommend you download that. And then after you download that, you'll be given the option to uh, check out the Extreme Fat Loss Program and download that as well. Uh, that would be a, a very uh, good investment for someone in your situation who's already lean but looking to take it up to that next level of, uh, you know, to go from lean to ripped. And that that's hard to do, right? It's it's not, you know, to go from fat to lean is one thing. And, and most people can just do that with regular, you know, eat clean, exercise regularly. You can go from fat to lean. To step it up and go from lean to ripped, that requires a different mindset, a different a mentality, a different approach. And of course, it requires a different level of commitment. It's a lot harder to go from lean to ripped than it is to just go from fat to lean. So if you want to uh, really step it up and get to the point where you're seeing the visible rip definition, then I would recommend you check out the Extreme Fat Loss Program. Again, that's available on my website, leehayward.com. And if, if you have any questions or you would like some help with this personally, shoot me a message. You know, I mean, you can sh contact me right through my website and I'd be more than happy to discuss things with you and kind of come up with some strategies to help you uh, take your physique to that next level. All right, let's bump back over to the YouTube chat. Again, for those of you who are just joining us, I have two live streams going on simultaneously. Again, trying to kill two birds with one stone. Got a Facebook video chat going here. Got a YouTube video chat going over there and just kind of taking questions from both. I mean, Okay, let's see. We have uh, Fabio joining us, and he says, "Is it necessary to take essential amino acids or be or branch chain amino acids intra workout to increase muscle size? Do I need to combine both pre workout and intra workout to gain muscle in less time? Is it necessary? No, it's not. You can still build muscle without taking any form of amino acids. I mean, if if you want to look at what's necessary, diet, exercise." rest and recovery. That's what's necessary. The supplements are optional. Now they can help, but they're not necessary. Uh, the way I look at it is if you are just getting started, you're in that beginner intermediate phase, then you know, just focus on maximizing your diet, maximizing your training and getting adequate recovery. Don't overcomplicate things with supplements. Uh, you, you really don't need them, especially in the beginning phases. As you get more advanced and as you're starting to push the intensity of your workouts, push the limits of your recovery, that's when things like supplementing with amino acids, either pre or intra workout and post workout, things like that can help. But for a beginner who's just getting started, maybe you're not 100% consistent, you're like working out on and off, that type of thing. Supplements are, are really. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's not going to uh, make or break your progress at that stage. It's only when you get more advanced that they're going to make a, make a difference. And even then, it's it's only a small difference, right? A lot of people think that supplements are going to be these this big miraculous change. And the reality is it, it's probably going to give you like a 5% edge, <laughs> you know, at most. 
that's it. Like you could probably get 95% of the results. If you weren't using supplements, if you use supplements properly, you could get like a hundred percent of the results. You know I mean? It's going to give you like that 5% edge over nothing. So it, it's not going to make or break your, your results in the gym diet tr consistency with your workouts. And of course, rest recovery and, and living a proper lifestyle. That's what's going to make the biggest difference. The supplements are just kind of like the icing on the cake, if you will. Uh, Daniel's joining us and he's got, let's see what his question is. He says, Lee, can you recommend a low calorie pre-workout supplement? I train early in the morning, so a pre-workout is a must and I don't like coffee. Well, you have several options. Uh, the easiest one, you're not a coffee drinker, just a caffeine pill. Sim simple. It's cheap. I mean, it, it, and it's it works. You can go and get caffeine pills at pretty much any supplement store or even drugstore for that matter. Uh, that would give you the same benefit as, as coffee. I mean, most people drink coffee for the, the caffeine. I mean, I know some people like the taste of it, uh, and they just like, you know, holding a hot cup of coffee and the stuff like that. It's just kind of the whole uh, sensation that goes around having a coffee. But if you're not a coffee person, then a uh, caffeine pill will be a very easy zero calorie alternative to give you that little bit of a energy boost and a mental pick me up. Uh, you can also try other pre-workout formulas. I mean, the thing that I'm a bit hesitant about when it comes to pre-workouts is most of them are a bit overkill. Like they, they way too much caffeine and way too many other, you know, stimulants and ingredients there. And while it can give you an energy boost, sometimes it's, it's like I said, it's overkill and you get to the point where you can stress your adrenal glands and it's just too much. So that's why I like to keep it simple and conservative. Uh, if, if you're not using anything right now, then the, the next step that I would recommend is just literally to have a caffeine pill. And be conservative with that as well, because again, if, if you're not a coffee drinker, then your tolerance for caffeine is probably not super high. So probably start off with like 100 milligrams of caffeine and just see how that works. I mean, that might be all that you need to kind of give you that uh, bit of an energy boost first thing in the morning. And it also helps to curb your appetite as well. So that's a nice little side benefit. And then if, if you find that that works well and you feel that you can tolerate more, then just bump it up. Maybe try like 150 milligrams and see how that works. And then probably like 200 milligrams of caffeine. And I'd say 200 will be the upper limit for most people. There's really no need to go over that because if you are, you're getting into this, the area where you're probably going to start to stress out your adrenal glands and, and it's, it's kind of like getting to the point of no return where more than 200 milligrams for most people the, the the benefit to you know risk to reward ratio if you will is, is not really in your favor so i like to kind of keep it in that moderate phase uh, a little tip too if you're using caffeine pills some of them only come in like 200 milligram pills so if you want to monitor the the dosage get yourself a pill cutter uh, if you go to like the drugstore or somewhere like that, you can probably pick them up really cheap. Sometimes if you ask the pharmacist, they'll probably even just give you one. That actually happened to me. Um, one time I was filling a prescription and the pharmacist uh, said, well, you know, for this prescription, you're supposed to take like a half a dosage or whatever it was. And they gave me a free pill cutter. And all it is is this little plastic chop machine that has a blade in there. So you like literally lay like the, the, the tablet in there and you just chop the, the tablet in half. So, I mean, if you want, you can cut it in half, cut it in quarters or something like that. And it's a great way to uh, adjust the dosage, especially if you only have the, the larger pill. So like if you have a 200 milligram caffeine pill, start off with half a tablet and uh, see how that works. If you can handle that and probably bump it up to like a three quarters of a tablet and see how that works. And then if you want, maybe bump it up to the full tablet, but Again, be conservative with it and try and get away with the least amount that produces the positive result. Don't have this more or better mentality because when it comes to stimulant type supplements, more is not better. <laughs> you want to be conservative and you'll find that that'll give you the best results in the long run. All right, let's see what else we have here. Okay. Uh, David's joining us and he says, what are your thoughts on taking creatine? I'm a big fan of taking creatine. I have been using it for years. Uh, I just like to use creatine monohydrate. That's what I find is the most efficient and most efficient and the most uh, cost effective as well. 
Uh, I have a blog post that covers all the questions that you might ever want to ask about creatine. Just do a search for Lee Hayward uh, creatine supplement information. I think it is like a creatine 101 or something like that. But if you just Google search Lee Hayward creatine supplement information, you'll find that blog post. And I go over all the most frequently asked questions about creatine. Uh, it, it's a fairly big, lengthy, meaty blog post. But again, if, if you're interested in creatine, uh, it pretty much covers all the concerns and questions that you might have about it. Okay. All right, let's see what else we got. We got to go back to the Facebook chat and see if there's any other questions coming through here. Uh, we have Oseal Guerrero saying, Lee, uh, can I cut calories during the week and then eat more on the weekends, or is it better to keep calories the same? That really depends on what it is you're training for. I mean, when it comes to nutrition, calories, all that, there, there's no one-size-fits-all answer, but th this is what I would probably recommend. Um, for most people, if, if you are trying to lose body fat, and you're looking to kind of incorporate, say, like a, a cycle diet, a very easy cycle that you can follow is to have low calories during the weekdays and then high calories on the weekends. That's a, a very simple strategy. And I find that this works well for, for a lot of people because it helps to uh, spike your met metabolism when you have those high calorie days. So if you're trying to lose body fat, keep it low, keep it strict during the weekdays, bump it up on the weekends and this works well with most people's schedule as well because uh, a lot of us work during the weekdays and we're, we're busy and then on the weekends you have more free time uh, more likely you're going to go to a restaurant or have family dinners and, and things like that so it, it kind of works well with a lot of people's schedule to s structure your diet this way so low calorie weekdays high calorie weekends uh, but if, if you're just getting started with your workouts, uh, I mean, you can probably try and just keep it the same all the time. But that strategy of, of eating, having more flexibility on the weekends works well for a lot of people. So, uh, again, it, it is a general answer because it's kind of a, a general question. I mean, I, I don't really know your specific situation, whether it is you're trying to bulk up, lose fat, or, or what it is you're trying to do. So, I mean, if you do want some more help with this and you want more specifics, then you know, shoot me a private message, or I mean, consider signing up for some one-on-one -on -one coaching. And like, say, this is this is what I do. I mean, I love to help people. And if you would like to really dive into a more specific, customized program tailored to you and your individual situation, I'd be more than happy to help you with that. Okay, I got another question here. This one's from uh, Nimaja uh, saying, "Any tips or advice for getting back in shape after several months of a layoff?" Uh, I already covered a couple questions about people resuming training at you know either as a beginner or coming back after a layoff. So I'm not really going to repeat myself, uh, but you can catch the replay for that. Uh, James Groves is joining us, saying, "How's the family? How's the little man? The little man is not so little anymore. He's 21 months old and growing like a weed. Uh, I gotta say, it's it's a lot of fun, and he's oh, I just heard him out there in the kitchen now." I mean, I could even probably bring him in for a little a little debut here on the video. So hang on, Sean, go get him. I'll go get him. Harvey. Oh, never mind, guys. He he's in his high chair having he's having supper right now in the high chair. So I can't disrupt him there. So uh, I'll leave it there. I was going to get him to come in and make a little debut on the camera, but uh, mommy and Harvey are out there at the high chair. So not going to disrupt the man when he's eating. He's got some appetite too. I mean, he eats literally every hour and a half to two hours. He's eating throughout the day. So I mean, he he's eating his bodybuilding bro foods. I tell you that. Yeah. Oh man, let's see what other questions we got here. Um, Alex is joining us. Alex saying he suffers from elbow pain when doing tricep workouts. Any advice on training once the pain stops? Well, yeah, I do have some advice. First off, if there's any exercises that are causing aches, pains, discomfort, don't do those exercises. Uh, try and find alternative movements to do instead. Uh, one thing that you can do uh, that's going to help 
is I find that cables and rubber resistance bands tend to be very therapeutic on the elbows, especially for tricep work. Uh, if you're using free weights, barbells, dumbbells, sometimes they can be pretty jarring on the elbows, but I find cables and rubber resistance bands uh, tend to be more therapeutic. Uh, I'd also recommend trying to do higher repetitions. I find that that tends to help rather than the heavy low rep stuff. Uh, but be, uh, you know, experiment with different movements and see what moves you can and cannot do. Uh, for example, like if you're doing like a, a regular straight bar tricep cable push down and you find that that bothers your elbows, try using a rope attachment. You know, just the, the changing the angle of your hand might allow you to work around the pain and the discomfort and to work the muscle uh, more comfortably. And that applies to a lot of things. Like if you're doing like a barbell bench press and it just kills your elbows, maybe try doing like a, a machine bench press or maybe even try doing a dumbbell bench press or try, you know, varying your grip, you know, wider grip or narrower grip and see if you can work around the pain that way. Now, other exercises you might want to do as well, like if, if a bench press bothers, try doing a push-up. You know, sometimes you can work around the exercises that way and work the muscles without causing a, a pain and discomfort. So that's one of the things that I find really helpful. And it's another thing that would help as well is if you really could diagnose what kind of pain you're suffering from, because elbow pain is very broad. I mean, it could be like, tennis elbow it could be golfer's elbow it could be just pain in the actual joint itself so i mean if you can kind of narrow it down to what type of elbow pain you're suffering from then there are specific rehab exercises that you can do for that pain uh, and and so if you're unsure of this i mean you can go visit a physiotherapist that would be the the easiest and most efficient way to do it go to a physiotherapist and get them to kind of uh, you know do a, a checkup and a diagnosis of your situation and offer some exercises you can do but even if you wanted to do it yourself, uh, you know, just start getting on the Google machine and searching for elbow pain. And there's a lot of articles and advice and a lot of YouTube videos that really dive into, uh, you know, different rehab exercises that you can do. Uh, one good resource that I'm going to recommend, it's, a, it's a Dr. Alan Mandel. Uh, he has a YouTube channel and I find his videos very helpful. I've used some of his content for overcoming different uh, injuries and uh, issues that I've dealt with myself. So Dr. Alan Mandel, uh, if you do a search for him, he's again, got a popular YouTube channel and good practical advice. And the thing that I like about his channel and his videos is it's all stuff that you can do yourself at home. So if, if you don't want to go visit a physiotherapist, you know, you, that's just not your thing or, or for whatever reason, you. you you know, you want to just look after yourself and do some kind of home therapy. Uh, the videos that he puts together is all geared towards that kind of stuff, stuff that you can do at home. Uh, you're just using household stuff. You know, sometimes you're, you're no equipment whatsoever or very minimal equipment, and it can really help. So uh, check out his channel. Uh, you know, again, I don't know the guy personally. I'm, I'm not being endorsed to recommend him. It's just an honest recommendation because I've – I've just found him myself uh, randomly going through YouTube and uh, very good quality content. All right, let's see what else we got here. Back over. I'm, I'm just going to take another question or two and clue it up because we have been going for over an hour now. I usually like to keep these chats to an hour at most, but you know, when I get going, right, I, I get I get the gift of gab sometimes when I get going here, and I just like to keep uh, keep chatting and answering questions. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, okay. uh, it's got a lot of a lot of questions here. Some are repetitive questions. Um, All right, here's one. This one's from Baxter80. I'll probably this will probably be the last question I'll answer here, but uh, just cover this one. It says he's been lifting for about 15 years, weighs 250 pounds, uh, over 15% body fat, but not fat. Uh, but I've never seen my abs despite having a lifter look. What are your thoughts on a ketogenic diet versus carb cycling? All right, interesting. Uh, if, if you've never seriously focused on fat loss before, I would probably start off with a basic um, 
gradually work your way into it. That's what I'm trying to say here. Um, ketogenic is kind of like hardcore dieting. And while it can work, it's not always the best approach for everybody. Uh, I, I would recommend first start off with a well-balanced diet. Again, like one-third protein, one-third carbs, one-third fat, slight caloric deficit, regular cardio in addition to your weight training workouts. Just get the foundation laid first and see how your body responds. I mean, maybe do that for the first month. And for, for most people, just having a clean, well-balanced diet, you know, cutting out any junk food or crap that you know you shouldn't be eating, you know, and, and burgers, fries, pizza, ice cream, cake, cookies, that kind of stuff. I mean, clean that out of your diet and just focus on a well-balanced, clean diet, one-third of protein, one-third fat, one-third carbs, slight caloric deficit, cardio on a daily basis, even if it's just getting outside and going for a daily walk. Boom. That alone will move most people in the right direction towards fat loss. I mean, depending on the individual, you could lose five to 10 pounds within your first month just doing that without even getting too crazy with anything. Once the basics stop working, then I would recommend implementing some form of carbohydrate cycling. And there's different ways of going about it. But I would recommend uh, some form of carbohydrate cycling. I mean, it could be like I mentioned earlier, low calorie, low carbs during the weekdays, high calorie, high carbs during the weekends. That's a simple plan that works well for most people. Follow that for as long as that's working for you. And then if you need to step it up to another level beyond that, that's when I would probably experiment with something like a, a ketogenic diet or maybe even trying intermittent fasting or, or some of these more extreme fat loss approaches, if you will. But do it in a gradual fashion. You know, I mean, if, if you can lose, the reason why I'm saying this is because I don't recommend trying to do as much as possible right off the start. Try and diet and lose fat on as high of a calorie intake as you can while still losing fat and making progress. And the reason for that is because it's going to help to keep your metabolic hormones high. It's going to help to keep your strength and energy high. It's going to help you to maintain lean muscle mass as you lose the body fat. Uh, rather than taking the approach of, I'm going to go on a crash diet and I'm going to starve myself and get as lean as fast as possible. I mean, when you take that crash diet approach, even if it's, you know, like a ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting or something, but you, you take this extreme overkill approach, a lot of times you're going to sacrifice lean muscle and strength in the process. And I mean, if you're a big guy, you know, you're 250 pounds, you've been lifting for 15 years, you put a lot of time and effort to build that muscle, to build that foundation. You just don't want to piss it away by starving yourself. <laughs> right. So try and take a strategic approach where you're going to just gradually lose the fat and do again, try and diet on as high of a calorie intake as you can so that you preserve your strength and lean muscle mass. I mean, one of the biggest complaints that people have when it comes to cutting fat is they lose strength and muscle in the process. And a lot of times it's just due to poor program planning and not understanding how the body works. So try and take a strategic approach. Just clean, well-balanced nutrition to start with. Then you can bump it up to uh, carbohydrate cycling. Then if needed, you can take it to keto or some other advanced strategy after that. But do it in phases and be more strategic about it. And again, if, if you would like some personalized help with it, feel free to shoot me a message. And, you know, I can help you with some coaching. Or, I mean, if you want, we can even uh, jump on Skype and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And that's something that I do offer. I should mention that because I know some people probably don't realize it. But on my website, I have a, a registration form. Whereas if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, kind of similar to what we're doing here, but it's just one-on-one. -on -one. It's a back and forth conversation where we're going to dive in deep and focus on you and your individual uh, needs. I do offer a free 20-minute one-on-one -on -one coaching call uh, with anyone who would like to discuss training and nutrition, stuff like that. And of course, you have to register for it, and, and I'll fit it into my schedule. It's not like, uh, you know, it's just kind of based on first-come, first-served basis. But if that's something that you're interested in, just head on over to my website, uh, leehayward.com, and up in the top menu bar, there's a link there for coaching, and uh, you can actually register for your free 20-minute coaching call if you would like to discuss training and nutrition supplementation strategies for you and your individual situation. So I do offer that. And I'm going to get ready and clue it up, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all your questions. I really appreciate the support, and uh, I look forward to having another chat with you soon. Um, 
just going to give you a heads up. Next Friday, which is June 29th, there will not be a live video chat. I'm actually heading out of town next Friday, so I just want to kind of give you a heads up. Uh, but we'll resume it the following Friday. And I like to do these live video chats every Friday, except if I'm out of town or have something planned. Obviously, I can't do it. But I'm just giving you a heads up. Next Friday, I will not be having a live video chat. And we'll postpone it till the following Friday, which is going to be the first Friday in July. So I just want to let you know that. And uh, have yourself a fantastic weekend. And I'll talk to you then. Take care. Over and out.